Hello there, my friends. I want to welcome all of you who have joined the worship channel of the First Presbyterian Church in Coe Valley and the Beulah Presbyterian Church of Orion. You may know this is the midweek meditation for the week of September 2nd. And as you also know, we continue our reflection on the father of our faith, Abraham. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we give you thanks for the wonderful blessing of this example that we have to learn and grow from. Give us wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word of the Lord is before us today from the 21st chapter of Genesis, and uh, we'll share from verses 22 to 34, and this is the, past, the part of this chapter that we didn't get to last week. Hear the word of the Lord. At that time, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his forces, said to Abraham, God is with you in everything that you do. Now swear to me here before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants. Show to me and the country where you are living as an alien the same kindness I have shown to you. Abraham said, I swear it. Then Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized. But Abimelech said, I don't know who has done this. You did not tell me. I only heard about it today. So Abraham brought sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech. And the two men made a treaty. Abraham set apart seven ewe lambs from the flock. And Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs you have set apart by themselves? He replied, Accept these seven lambs from my hand as a witness that I dug this well. So that place was called Beersheba, because the two men swore an oath there. After the treaty had been made at Beersheba, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his forces, returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he called upon the name of the Lord, the eternal God, and Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time. Here ends this blessed reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord has come before us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the wonderful blessing of your love and the wisdom that comes when we open God's word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you may remember from last week, we covered only the first part of the 21st chapter of Genesis. Then we talked about the birth of Isaac and how Ishmael and Hagar were sent away because the inheritance of Abraham was truly designated by God to be only for Isaac and his descendants. They would be God's chosen people. You may remember also that the birth of Isaac was the fulfillment of a promise that had been a part of Abraham and Sarah's journey for a long time through many struggles and doubts and experiences. Well, God promises that he will make a nation out of the descendants of Ishmael, the promised land, Israel, was for only Isaac and only this line proceeding from Abraham's people. Now, in today's passage, we come to the place where for the first time, Abraham and Sarah settle in one place. Up until now, Abraham has lived the life of a nomad. He and his community had moved around to the place where there was water enough to sustain the livestock and the people of his community. 
In this passage, Abraham and his people have dug a well. And if you dig a well, that means that you're going to stick around for a while. Now, in order to understand this passage, we have to think back a couple of weeks and a couple of chapters to the last time that Abraham encountered Abimelech. You may remember, Abraham was untruthful to Abimelech. He told him that Sarah was his sister, and that created a very big misunderstanding between Abraham and Abimelech. At the end of the story, as a part of the reconciliation over the problems that Abraham's untruthfulness has caused, Abimelech tells Abraham at the end of the story, my land is before you. Live wherever you like within that land. And in this passage, it appears that Abraham has chosen to accept Abimelech's invitation to live wherever you like. So Abraham settled in this place about 40 miles to the east of Abimelech's palace, and he dug a well there, and he started to put down roots there in the place that's now called Beersheba. Well, soon after Abraham settled there, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding, a little bit of a tussle, a bit of a crook ruffle between Abraham's people and Abimelech's people. It turns out that some of Abimelech's people didn't understand or didn't respect or didn't care about the arrangement that Sarah and Abraham and their people were allowed to live wherever they wanted to in Abimelech's kingdom. So some of Abimelech's servants seized the well that belonged to Abraham and Sarah and their people. So as a response to hearing about this dispute, King Abimelech gets on his horse and he comes and he says to Abraham, what's going on here? Why are our people uh, having this unrest? And Abraham explains, well, the dispute is about this well that was dug by our community. Well, here's what's really going on for Abimelech in this situation. Abimelech still remembers that he got chewed out by God during that whole situation about Sarah when she was a part of his harem in their last encounter. So Abimelech has no interest in making Abraham unhappy because he knows that Abraham has power, Abraham has wealth, and most of all, Abraham has God on his side. So Abimelech says point blank, I know that God is with you in all that you do. And he doesn't want to upset God again. But up until now, Abraham has just not proven to be the most trustworthy an honorable person to deal with. Abimelech just wasn't sure that he could trust Abraham because not all that long ago, Abraham told Abimelech that Sarah was his sister. So was he really being straight about this whole issue with the well? Now in this passage, Abimelech is just seeking some assurance that there's no deception involved in this case with the well where Abraham is complaining. He wanted to avoid the deceit in their last encounter, where Abraham tells Abimelech the lie that Sarah was his sister. So Abimelech says to Abraham, now swear to me here before your God that you will not deal with me falsely. Show me and the country where you are living as an alien, so in other words, rent-free, show me the same kindness that I have shown you. And Abraham says, I swear it. After Abraham 
give the assurance of his honesty, he then explains the details of uh, this disagreement uh, about the well. And then Abimelech says, I don't know who's done this. You didn't tell me. I just heard about it today. The real situation here is that Abimelech is still a little bit afraid that he might encounter God's wrath if he crosses Abraham. So he sort of says here, let's just get one thing clear. I'm not accountable for any of this. This is not my fault. I didn't even know about any of it until today. Now Abraham has to take a step back here. And he recognizes he has been guilty of deceiving Abimelech in the past. He also, I think, realizes that the king has been generous to him. The king had given him permission to settle here in this place without any real price associated with the land that he had chosen to settle on. So Abraham brings a little peace offering. He brings sheep and cattle, and the two men talk together and make a treaty, a peace agreement. Then, Abraham sets apart seven ewe lambs. And Abimelech says, well, what are these seven ewe lambs for that you've set apart? We've already made our treaty. And Abraham said that these seven ewe lambs represent an oath that I and my people did indeed dig that well. It was an extra assurance of Abraham's truthfulness the seal of his integrity. And his integrity, I believe, from this day forward, an assurance that Abimelech can entrust Abraham from now on. And that was when the place was actually named, this place Beersheba. Beersheba means a well of oath or a well of seven. And seven is that number which symbolically in the, the Hebrew faith represents that which is holy. Thus, Beersheba is named recognizing the treaty, the covenant that was between Abraham and Abimelech that day. So the next question is, what can we take from this passage that we have chronicled about the treaty between Abraham and Abimelech? Abraham, I believe, in this passage, has to come to a reckoning that he has made some mistakes in the past. He has lied twice, telling those around him that Sarah is his sister. He then came to the place where he realized that his integrity, his trustworthiness, his honesty were all justifiably being called into question. That he lied isn't even at issue. But if we try to think about the instances where Abraham lied, each time it had to do with an instance where Abraham was afraid, where he had fear that was directing the untruthfulness. And if we stop and think about that, Fear has compromised the faith of each and every child of God. So I guess we can have compassion and grace uh, for Abraham and the lies that he told in the face of real fear in his journey. But let's put Abraham's journey aside for a little bit and think about the implications of this story on our actions and on our ability to tell a neighbor about the word of God. We see here where Abraham, the father of our faith, compromised his faith, his integrity, his credibility enough so that he had to take actions to repair his credibility with Abimelech. So that means for us, Wednesday, when we're dealing with an associate at work, 
on Saturday when we're letting our hair down just a little bit at a wedding celebration. Our words and our actions can make a difference in our ability to effectively witness to God and to effectively be the Lord's servants. We also learn in this passage that in the event that we do make a mistake with regard to our integrity, the integrity of our faith, because of our fear, because of our weakness, or because of our self-indulgence, it doesn't matter. We can repair the damage by following Abraham's example. We can repair the damage to our reputation. We can repair the damage to our ability to witness by turning back to a righteous path that God gives us every day of our life. So I leave you to think on this. If Abraham can repair his ability to witness to his faith after making some serious mistakes, if Paul can change from Saul the persecutor to Paul the apostle, then with the grace and the mercy of Jesus' loving sacrifice, you and I, can return from any missteps that we might take to a path of righteousness. From wherever it is that we may have strayed from, we can repair the damage. And we can again become effective witnesses and noble service, servants in the name of our great God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, Hear our prayer as we come humbly before you that we might know of your goodness and love, your grace and mercy, and that those gifts might lead to a sense of peace as we continue to witness and continue to serve by the light and the guidance of the precious Holy Spirit before us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.